Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part three of our to Unity tutorial on making a bar chart using the UI tools. So in our last video, we got our bar set up where our bars are sizing compared to one another, but we ran into a little problem. We can show it again here. If I hit the play button, we see that one of our bars goes way up above and actually off not just the chart, but off the screen. And the reason for that was if we jump over to Mono Develop, we saw that when we're putting in our values, they only work if they're between zero and one. Um, anything above that, like this 1.5, shoots right off the screen. We can't see it anymore. It's not useful information to us. So I'm going to solve a couple of problems with this. First off, um, it's really not ideal to be, obviously in your game, you're not going to be um, hard coding the values of your graph. You're going to be putting in the, them in dynamically. So I'm going to quickly show how we can do that right now just by using them publicly in the inspector. But the idea being that this would be something that's coming from your game, some sort of values are taking from your game, and then telling the um, telling your class to show them in the graph. The second thing is, whatever these values are, we need to make sure that they're normalized between 0 and 1 so that they're always staying within the bounds of our graph. So let's get started with this. The first thing we can do, we can delete this um, float array that we created here. We can delete it entirely because we're instead going to put in up here a public, actually we're going to put it with the rest of our public stuff, a public int array. We're going to call this input values. So these are, like I say, the values that would be coming from your game, whether they're, you know, number of enemies killed, number of hours spent in the game, how, wh however you're doing it. These are the values coming in. And I'm making them as ints and not as floats because chances are, while the ultimately the graph is going to want to use a float, chances are, unless you're using something very specific, you're probably putting a count of something, in other words, ints, into the, um, into the graph. So we've got that created. We can jump back over to Unity. We should see that pop up here. Except that we have an error. Oh, because I got rid of values. Um, quickest way to solve this right now is I'm going to say input values here, which is actually what we want. Basically, the salt, what we're doing here is we're telling it input values in the inspector, then telling our graph to display those input values instead of what we hard-coded in our script, which is also nice because we can um, change things in the inspector and test them as we go. So now, if I save this, I can jump back. And we should get our... Oh, I also... The challenge of just deleting something wholesale is that you have to make sure everything is what it's supposed to be, so we can make this int. Int val's there, and then that should be good for everything we need. Now, if I go back to here one last time, we should finally get our input values array. So now, instead of doing um, what we had before, which was the, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, I can put in some, like, numbers. Maybe it's, you know, 20, 17, and 42. So those are maybe the levels that everyone's at at this point in the game. And you want to show those as a comparison in a bar graph for some reason. So. We can save that. Now if we hit play again, we're going to see that these still go way, they're all way too high. That's because we need to take these numbers and make them somehow fit into that space between 0 and 1, what we call normalizing. And what we first have to do is decide what we want that, what, what 1 should be versus what 0 should be. 0 will still be 0 probably, but 1 is 1 exactly 42? Is it a little bit higher? Is it a little bit, you know, probably would be lower than that, but you know, do we want it to be, is it the level cap? Things like that. For now, what we're just going to do is we're going to make it the highest number. Whatever the highest number is, that's going to be the maximum of our graph. So, what we need to figure out is when we start with this int vals here, the, you know, when we get this array of values, we need to figure out which is the highest one. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. Um, one way would be to create a for loop and then go through every value in the array and say, if this value, starting with the first one, we store that value. Then we go to the second value and we say, is this higher? If it is, then we're going to remember that one instead, so on and so forth. However, there's a very quick way we can do this as well. If we go back up to our namespaces here, we're going to create a new namespace. We're going to say using system.link, and that's link with a Q. And that gives us, it's a lot of kind of data management stuff. You can do a lot of sorting of arrays with this. But the other thing that you can do is you can say, uh, vals dot max and that will give you 
the maximum value, whatever the highest value is. So right now our 42 would be our max value. And so we're gonna set that, we're gonna say int, and we're gonna say um, max value equals vals.max. Say that. And so now all we have to do is now we know what that highest number is that we're going to be working with. So now when we make each bar, instead of setting its height to the value, the int value, we're going to set it to a adjusted value. And so for each, each time we go through for each bar, we're going to create a float called normalized value. And what that's going to be equal to is the value of the number that we're at. So vals i divided by max value. So for example, when we have 20 as our first number, that's going to be 20 divided by roughly 42, or it's going to be divided by 42, which is roughly just a little bit less than half, so it should be a little bit less than half the size of the graph. Now one thing we do have to do here is we need to say float, we need to cast both this value and the max value as a float. And the reason for this is that we could, it seems like it would be easier to just say, you know, oh, why don't we just put all this in parentheses and say, you know, vals divided by max value and then cast that as a float. The problem with that is that when we do this, then we're dividing this way, we're actually dividing still as an int. So we wouldn't get point four, six, five, whatever this, number would be, we'd actually just get zero. And so you'd end up with a graph that's either zeros and ones, but nothing in between. So what we need to make sure we're doing is making sure it's a float being divided by a float so that it can actually get a float um, result. So that's why we have to cast both the values as a float and the max value as a float. And then we can actually get a result between zero and one. So now that we have this normalized value, we can say the chart height times that normalized value. So now when we go back here and we hit play, what we should see are three bars. First one, a little bit less than half the size. The next one's gonna be a little bit smaller than that one. And the very last one going to the top of the chart. So we hit play here. And sure enough, we see pretty much exactly that. Now there is one other issue with this. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but if I go back and say I reduce this number down to like 13, so these are gonna be stepping down. I hit play again. We see that this first bar, now 20 is the maximum, so it goes all the way to the top, actually creeps a little bit above the top of this chart. And the reason for that is that I had moved the bottom of it up just a little bit here. Um, so that it wouldn't block the bottom line. So there's like about a six pixel, I think it is, difference um, between the top here. And we're going to solve that in a little bit, little bit of a cheating way, but a little bit just to make our lives easy as well. What we're going to do is we're going to just say time, multiply all this by 0.95f. Um, I'm going to throw this whole thing in parentheses just in case I don't want that to do anything. I don't think it would because multiplying and dividing shouldn't should all be transitive, but just in case, make sure that that is um, contained, and then we're gonna multiply all that by 0.95. So it's just gonna shrink everything by about 5%. So now what we see here, whoops, as we go to Unity, we hit play here. Those all fit within our graph. And like I said, you know, this isn't obviously an exact solution to this, but most of the time when you see a graph like this, it doesn't tend to have the top value go all the way to the top. So this is kind of a nice way to be able to just um, keep it neatly contained within that graph and not have anything butting right up against the edge. Say if you had, you know, stuff around the borders of other information and things, it's, you know, all going to be still clean to look at and easily understandable. Um, so that's going to do it for this video. Just I wanted to talk about, like I said, normalizing these values, making sure they stay within your chart. Um, next time we're going to quickly look at adding some color to this chart as well as adding some labels so that we actually have um, value, more, a little bit more valuable information coming from this chart. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.